Hello, and welcome to today's presentation on CondenSafe, the safe and sustainable way to reduce water in cooling condensers. Today we'd like to take a look at condensate, which is a replacement for standard acid treatments used in cooling condensers. And the first thing that I would like to point out is, with regard to hydrochloric and sulfuric acids, they can pose significant health and eh and s issues for customers with condensate however you can see that the solution is fairly innocuous having a health hazard rating of zero flammability rating of zero physical hazard rating of zero and requiring personal protective equipment of of a so let's take a look a little bit at how condensate actually works and so we will rotate over and take a look at our pH and conductivity meter. We have in the glass on the left a solution of standard softened water. You see that we have a pH of 7.8 and a conductivity of 739. We're going to rotate over to our solution. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take out just a five or a one milliliter sample of the water and we'll test it for hardness at a later time. Then we're going to take our condensate and we're going to add a couple drops just to show you what happens to our pH. So one, two, three drops. We'll go back over to our conductivity meter and we'll get a fresh reading and we'll stir it a little bit and you can see that the product is in fact acidic because we are seeing a drop in the pH. We'll add a few more drops and stir again. One, two, three, four, five. Stir again. Now we're down to a pH of, of 3. And so there should be no doubt at, at this point uh, that, that Condensafe is, in fact, an acidic product. So uh, we're going to shift now to center stage, if you will, and take a look at our demonstration involving an egg. So there is our volunteer. The egg will be placed into the same water that we just saw. And then I'm going to drop the condensate solution in, making a 50% solution of the acid in water. And you'll notice I have my fingers in the solution. And just as we would predict, there is no ill effect. So we'll zoom back on this just a little bit. What you're seeing in the container is the bubbling action produced by the acids effect on the calcium carbonate shell of the egg. And so at the end of this video we'll take a look at what actually happens to to the egg but in the meantime, what we're going to go ahead and take a look at is our impact on sustainability. So as many of you know, the evaporation rate of standard evaporative condensers is about a gallon and a half per hour per ton. Now, if we take kind of a medium-sized system, that being a thousand tons, we will evaporate 36,000 gallons per day, or based on a 24-hour day and a 365-day year, about 13.4 million gallons per year. We also know that bleed can be expressed as evaporation divided by cycles minus one. 
And so in terms of total water use, what you quickly see is in evaporative condensers that operate at fairly low cycles, sometimes because of the installation's uh, impression of acids and, and how safe they may be or may not be, uh, you end up with some fairly low cycles of concentration and that translates directly into high water use. And so in the non-sustainable example on the left, we would see three cycles of concentration. According to our formula, 13.4 million divided by cycles minus one, that would be two, of course. Our annual water use, we would expect to be around 19.9 million, or 19 .9, uh, million gallons a year. On the right-hand side, if we were able to increase the cycles of concentration to seven, now we're able to divide that 13.4 million by a much larger number, six in this case, and our water use will in fact drop to 15.6 million gallons a day. That results in the same tower, the same 1,000 ton tower operated 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, of a water savings of 4.3 million gallons per year. That's one tower in one plant uh, in one location uh, in our country. And so you can quickly see how important it is for the water resources of our country and for the operational efficiency of our plants to be as sustainable as we can be with our water supplies. So let's take a look now at how our egg is coming along. And we still see exactly the same thing. And that is, of course, that the egg is, is bubbling away there. And let's just go ahead and, and if we can, we'll, we'll stir this just a little bit again. And now we're going to do a quick hardness test on the water just to show you that the, uh, the egg uh, hardness from the shell, the calcium carbonate, is in fact coming off the shell and into the water that we previously saw as soft. So we'll take a look at our, at our water source again. Putting that maybe right here so that we can see. And in the, uh, in the initial case, We have our hardness buffer, and now we have one scoop of powder, and we have that blue, that dark blue color that we all know as hard. And so, just right on top of this, what we're going to do is we're going to put in one mil of our condensate, and what we quickly see is the water is no longer blue it is in fact purple. So let's take a look at how much uh, from a hardness buffer perspective. We'll go ahead and buffer that back up to where it should be. And let's take a look at how much uh, hardness has been removed in this particular case. So you can see in just a short amount of time Our water has picked up about 300 parts per million of hardness. And you can probably see that best just by looking through the, the corner there. So that, in fact, proves that the hardness from the eggshell has been removed. So we'll go back to our egg one more time. And now, I want to show you what this egg will look like five minutes from now. And so once the solution of condensate has a chance to work, what you see is the egg shell has been completely removed, except for the section on the top where in this particular case the egg was floating. So we can kind of see that. 
And what you're seeing here is directly inside the membrane of the egg. And just to show you that this is in fact a real uncooked egg, we're going to take and break the egg into the glass of water, uh, into the glass. So we'll try and do this without making a terrible mess. Oop. So this is in fact the membrane that has been left and there you see the shell. So if we wish we can peel that shell fragment right off of the egg itself. So in closing, what we now see is we have a tool available to us that will allow us to operate our condensing cooling systems in a much safer and far more sustainable way than was possible in the past. Thank you very much for watching. Please look at our website, sustainablewatersolutionsllc.com for more information on CondenSafe or the other projects that we are involved in.